This video is part of the cybersecurity series of presentations. This presentation specifically provides a deep dive into the topic of buffer overflow vulnerabilities that has resulted in several cybersecurity threats in the past. Buffer is essentially an array that is used to store data in a program. Remember that string is just an array of characters, hence strings can also be used as buffers. Buffer overflow essentially occurs due to invalid array access, typically where the bounds are not checked. What essentially happens is variables are typically stored consecutively in memory. When bounds are not checked and as data is stored in the buffer, the data can overflow and overwrite adjacent memory locations. This results in a vulnerability which can be exploited in different ways. Buffer overflow attacks essentially take advantage of poorly coded or poorly tested programs where the inputs are not correctly handled, and this scenario arises because programs make incorrect assumptions on how some of these standard input output methods work. There are different types of buffer overflow attacks, and they are essentially exploited in two different categories. First category of exploits use overflow to attack or change the value of adjacent variables, and this causes the program to operate incorrectly, which can be used in a malicious way. The second approach is of buffer overflow is called stack smashing. Here, the buffer overflow attack is used to change the return value of methods, so when a method finishes, it incorrectly returns to a wrong location in memory, which can then be used to run malicious code Overflow in the former case is much simpler than the stack smashing scenario, but the stack smashing scenario can be used as a far more powerful attack, but stack smashing requires a lot more engineering and is very involved when compared to the first approach. We will do a deeper dive into the first approach. Buffer overflow stems from the following in interrelated factors. First one, Bounds checking is not automatically performed, particularly in C and C++, and could be the case in a lot of systems programming languages. This is because checking array bounds in general is a very expensive operation, both in terms of energy and time, which are both important factors for a lot of applications. So the responsibility of doing bounds check is left up to the programmers to do it on an as-needed basis, so the programmers can decide where the bounce check needs to happen in an efficient way so they can balance time, energy, and safety of their programs. Of course, this is catering to smart developers or smart programmers. So as a general rule of thumb, several standard methods in C and C++ do not perform bounce check because they assume the programmer is going to decide when it is appropriate to perform those bounce check. So if these methods are incorrectly used, that can give rise to buffer overflow vulnerabilities in the programs. A second one that to keep in mind is how the compilers behave and how variables or data is stored in memory is that it is stored consecutively. So this is something that's important to keep in mind is when a compiler compiles a program, generally it will store data consecutively as it encounters the need to store variables in memory. So when one variable is overwritten or you go beyond the bounds of a variable, you will be invariably spilling or overwriting values of other variables that are stored adjacent to it in memory. Let's look at a simple example to illustrate the idea of a buffer overflow. Here we're going to have a simple main method that's basically going to check to see if some input data is valid or invalid and print a simple authentication message. We're going to use a Boolean flag to check if some input password is valid. So we're going to do a simple password check. Here we're just going to hard code the password for simplicity. And we're going to check if some input is equal to the uh, hidden secret. And we're going to get an input here. And here we're going to assume that the password is typically not going to be longer than 16 characters. So uh, the password array is hard coded to 16. And we're going to prompt the user to enter some passcode and read in the passcode from the user. Pretty straightforward, seemingly benign program. However, there are a couple of things to note here. First to keep in mind is the array of, of characters for password 
and the boolean valid flag are stored consecutively in memory. So if you look at the memory layout first, you'll have 16 bytes associated with the variable password, and then you will have a byte for the valid flag. When the data is read, by default, the stream extraction operator does not do a bounce check when it is an array of characters. So if the user enters more than 16 characters, notice that the password size is only 16. So if the user enters more than 16 characters, this will cause the data to overflow the password buffer and overwrite values in the valid flag. And this behavior can be utilized and subvert the operations of this program. Let's do a slightly deeper dive into this idea. So keep in mind, the data is organized consecutive in memory, so you'll have the 16 bytes for the password and one byte for the valid flag. Let's say user enters a short password, say in this example, temp123. This one fits nicely in the buffer, and you will not have a buffer overflow, and the program will check it's not the pa secret password you're looking for, the valid flag remains zero, and the program correctly prints authentication failure. So this is one scenario where the program works, and this is typically something you might test and say, yeah, this program works. But a malicious user will think differently about this program, and a malicious user will start entering long passwords. So let's say in this case, they enter a 17-character password. The first 16 characters will fit into the buffer, but when the malicious user enters the 17 character, it overflows the buffer, overwriting the valid flag, thereby causing this program to incorrectly behave here, because the valid flag is no longer zero, that means uh, it is non-zero is true. So since this valid flag is set to true, that means the password is a match, and this program incorrectly behaves and prints success in your root. And if this program were to be used for authentication, then now you have a malicious user has gained access to your system. This is an example of how buffer overflow attacks can be used to subvert the operations of some of the programs. Let's look at uh, uh, the second scenario called stack smashing. Here we look at it from a much higher level perspective. The background that is important to keep in mind for stack smashing is how CPUs handle method calls. Typically, when a method is called, the return address, that means where the program needs to resume after the method call is finished, is stored on the stack. So for example, if you have a code and the program is going to make a method call, so assume there is a method that's being called, the return address, that means where the program needs to return after the method call is done, is stored on the stack. And this address is used to return back to the method that called this method. So this information is stored on the stack. Now, what stack smashing relies on is the fact that some of the buffers when you allocate it, when you define this way in a program, are allocated on the stack. So here in this case, say the call me method, first you'll have the return address, and then the buffer will be allocated right after it. So here, now the, that the malicious user knows the buffer is set up, the malicious user can then use buffer overflow attack to overwrite the return address, which is stored right after the buffer, and then use the data that they have overwritten the buffer with to run instructions and start executing some malicious operations. Specifically, think about it, when they overwrite this buffer with the malicious code, they can put some malicious code in their program, modify the return address to point to this malicious code in their program, and when the method is ends, it actually, rather than going back to the program that called it, or to the method that called it, the the malicious code starts executing, and this malicious code can perform further attacks, like it can run uh, other programs, start up a shell. So if this program was running as a super user, it will now start a super user shell where the malicious user can now modify or change administrative settings or even delete files on the system, so on and so forth. So, but stack smashing requires a little bit more deeper understanding of assembly and how the instructions are coded in order to be able to pull it off, but it's not that difficult. There are lots of examples that you can look up on the internet that will show you how to craft a malicious code for a specific situation or scenario. So now that we know a little bit about a buffer overflow attacks, let's think about how to avoid these. The first one is, of course, use correct idiomatic approaches. Generally, if you want to read data, if you want to read a string, Prefer to read it as a string. Don't create an array of characters as simple as that. 
Second, if you are working with buffers, uh, typically you will use a vector as a buffer. Make sure you use methods that have those limits in there. So for example here, rather than directly reading data from C in, the method read takes how many, what is the maximum number of characters that should be read. In this case, it's 256. So I prefer, the, you should prefer those methods where you specifically have a hard-coded size, or you could use buffer.size here if you want to specify the size of the buffer. So you would use different uh, methods to appropriately limit the amount of data that is being loaded into these buffers. So it's important to keep those uh, limits in mind. Of course, it's uh, when you're developing, um, you sh it's a good idea to compile and test everything with address sanitizer. So with GCC, you'll throw the dash F sanitize equals address flag. So that when you compile a program, the address sanitizer automatically runs and it'll catch these buffer overflow issues and report it as stack traces. So you'll get memory errors or segmentation errors or segmentation faults, incorrect memory access. All of these will be reported. So it'll catch and fix these issues, even if you accidentally miss or do something incorrect. And of course, ensure you thoroughly test these programs, particularly if you're doing user-facing inputs. It's important to do robust testing, test with both invalid inputs, uh, large or in malicious inputs. So it's kind of important to do a robust testing, particularly when you're dealing with uh, user inputs. So in summary, Buffer overflow is a cybersecurity issue. It has occurred a lot in the past, um, and it's common with programs developed in C and C++. The source of buffer overflow is due to poorly coded or poorly tested programs. Keep in mind, this is because by default, the methods do not do array checks because checking each array access is not efficient in terms of time or energy. So the default methods will not do that. So if you have incorrect assumption that you assume these methods will check them, you will be in for a load of trouble. So it's important to make sure that you keep those extra checks in mind when you write programs. And of course, key important solution is idiomatic approaches. Prefer to use std string or std vector for your buffers. Uh, when you're reading data, ensure you always have some limit in mind. You should never have unbounded or unlimited inputs in any program that you develop. And of course, use modern compiler tools to validate and the runtime operations of your program. And use robust testing and include failure testing to ensure that you do not get caught by these uh, buffer overflow type cybersecurity issues.